Why it won't be the Houston Texans winning the AFC South this season? The 2024 Locked On NFL season previews continue right now. This is the 2024 Locked On NFL season preview, only on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the 2024 Locked On NFL season previews. This episode, we are focused on on the AFC South. I'm Tyler Rowland, host of the Locked on Titans podcast. I'll be your host for this divisional preview. Joining me are my fantastic colleagues from the Locked on Podcast Network. First, we have Cody Davis from Locked on Texans. We have Zach Hicks from Locked on Colts. And then the OG himself, we have Tony Wiggins from Locked on Jaguars. Today, we are going to look at the contenders. What makes a successful season for each team? Early hot seats. What one thing could derail each team's season win totals? MVP candidates. And we're going to give each other some flowers as well before we enter a season-long battle for the division against each other. Let's start with the end of the season. Who is going to win the AFC South? Cody Your Texans won the division last year. I'll start with you. Who wins the AFC South this season? Of course, the team right here in the city of Houston, the Houston Texans, man. I mean, look, I know a lot of people like to, when they say the Houston Texans, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is C.J. Stroud. I think we all can agree that entering year two, C.J. is a top 10 quarterback in the league. But for me personally, I believe in the Houston Texans because of the guys that's calling the shots on the sideline. You know, head coach D'Amico Ryan's offensive coordinator, Bobby Sloyd. For me, I just look at what they did in their first year as the primary player Play callers, the first year at the helm of this franchise. And I'm thinking to myself, look, if they was able to have that success as first years and as rookies, they only are going to just get better with their play calling and everything else in between. And now they have experience. That's the main reason why I believe in the Houston Texans to repeat as AFC South champs. Yeah. And look, I think you make a great point and you have really good stuff there in Houston. But let's remember The Colts were 15 yards away from taking this division last year, and Shane Steichen was essentially entering a gunfight with, you know, a water gun with Gardner Minshew as his quarterback. That's essentially what we had here last year, our starting quarterback going down after only having four games played last year. Jonathan Taylor on one leg last year still ran for 200 yards against the Houston Texans in that final game and caught the Colts, again, 15 yards away from that division title. Look, we're optimistic right now. Indianapolis Colts are taking this division. Anthony Richardson's going to finish a season. (laughs) He's going to finish a season, and we're going to take this division. Everyone's going to stay healthy, no more injuries, and we're going to take this division here this year. I warned both of y'all. Last year, we came (laughs) off of a 9-8 and season, and everybody thought they were ascending. And guess what? They finished 9-8 and again and had to go into Week 17 worrying about who was going to win the game, and they lost here in Jacksonville. So what I'm telling you is be very careful when the rabbit has the gun, things change. So you have to (laughs) mentally prepare yourself. Now, unlike the Jaguars, you guys didn't stand pat. But here's what happened. The Jaguars didn't either this offseason. I Mm. think the Jaguars are going to win it because all I think they have to do is be two games better than they were last year. And I think with the scheme change on defense, with some of the additions that they've had, I think they listened to Locked On Jaguars because they did a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted them to do. So (laughs) my thing is I do believe that the Jacksonville Jaguars will win because now the target is in Houston as opposed to being in Jacksonville. That's fair. I mean, it is different when you're the team with the expectations. That's something that Jacksonville learned. Obviously, the Titans had a good season in 2021, followed that up in 2022 with a not-so-good season. So things do change when you get that target on your back. I think it's interesting that all three of you guys think that your team is going to be the team that comes out on top. Uh, I know that my Titans fans will not like to hear this, but I am not going to continue that trend. (laughs) Uh, I am not going to have the Titans winning the AFC South in a shocking move. Uh, Look, I got to go with Houston, too. I think at the end of the day, the best quarterback in the division is in Houston. Sorry, Tony. Um, I do like D'Amico Ryans as a defensive mind. And keeping Bobby Slowick and keeping that continuity, I think, is good. Now, while I'm not as high on some of the moves that the Texans made on defense this offseason as the general consensus... Uh, We can maybe get into some of that stuff later when we talk about what could derail the season. I still think that Houston overall is the best roster. I trust their coaching staff the most. And ultimately, I trust C.J. Stroud 
the most. Mm. So I'm going to say that the Houston Texans win the division. But how many games, how many games are these teams going to win? I think we have a good idea of what some of you guys are going to say about these win totals here. But let's go over to FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and look at some win totals. The Houston Texans, nine and a half. Cody, do you think they're going over or under nine and a half wins? That's so disrespectful. I mean, once again, you take a look at what they did in year one. Rookie quarterback, rookie defensive anchor in Will Anderson Jr. I mean, a lot of your young guys were still trying to find their way. Darius Stingley Jr., Nico Collins. You take all of that and look what they was able to add in the offseason. There's no way in the world the Houston Texans will win less than I have them at 12 wins maximum for this year because, look, I understand that schedule is hard, especially the back half of that schedule. But once again, they now have the experience needed in order to to win those battle-tested games that's going to come during the second half of this um, 2024 season. I know yeah. Zach doesn't believe in it, but <laughs> first, first place schedule – First place schedule mm. might be more difficult for Houston this year. Anyway, Zach, I know that you're not a believer in the schedule thing like me, but you you tell us Colts, eight and a half wins. Are they going over or under? Look, unlike Cody, I'm going to be respectful to our friends over at FanDuel. <laughs> I think that's a perfectly fine thing for the Colts because, look, the Colts, I admit, the Colts are the most volatile team here. We could be the worst team in the division or the best team in the division. It comes down to whether Anthony Richardson finishes the full season. That's really what it comes down to. But right. I think the Colts, if they can survive their tough early season stretch, they have a very, very easy finish to the season. They can coast, not coast the end, but they can finish strong at the end of this year and make a late run. So I'm going to go over on that. I think the Colts go over eight and a half. I definitely could see a world where they go below that. Uh, but I'm being optimistic here. Unlike you, Tyler, not picking the Tennessee <laughs> Titans to win the division. Come on, we could have gone four right. four here. Throw realism out. Tony? Eight and a half for Jacksonville as well. I find it very interesting that Houston, nine and a half. Jacksonville, eight and a half. Indy, eight and a half. Like, I think it's pretty clear the books aren't 100% certain what's going on. FanDuel doesn't know 100% who to believe in and who not to believe in. They're all jumbled up. Do you have the Jags going over eight and a half wins? I am guessing that you do. I absolutely do. But I respect FanDuel. I love FanDuel. That's America's yes. sports book, in my opinion. But the thing <laughs> is, is look at that plug. Y'all see that? Y'all see that shameless plug? But no, it's for real. Here's the thing. They're going over eight and a half. They did nine the last two years. They're better. I, I believe they're a lot better. And I want to respect those other opponents. But uh, I, I really do believe that they are a team that is ready to make that next step. Uh, I mean, we're the only team that has a coach that has won a Super Bowl somewhere else right and if he wins one in jacksonville eventually he'll be the first coach to, coach to win one in two different places so i think he has a keen understanding of how to get there i do believe they have improved their roster to the point where a lot of the things that didn't enable them to get over the hump out of that nine uh win area i think they get over that hump now now we don't know about injuries none of us do but uh, i do believe that a year of being the team with the target on your back and not actually – they didn't decrease their wins. They stayed the same. I think they learned a valuable lesson. And for that, I believe that the Jacksonville Jaguars will definitely get more than eight and a half wins. All right, listen. I don't think that any of your guys' answers are controversial in any way. I think I, You know, I could absolutely see all these teams going over depending on how things break. But this one might be the Titans' six and a half wins – I have them going over as well, all right? I have the Titans going over, and here's the thing. The Titans won six games last year and had one of the worst rosters in the NFL. The Titans have added so many players that make the quality of the roster so much better. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Mike Vrabel is a good football coach, and he should get another opportunity, but I think that Brian Callahan is the right football coach for where the Titans are at as a team and kind of in the timeline of how they're growing their roster. There's just no way that I can sit here and say that the Titans lose more games or lose as many games as they did last year with all of the improvements to the roster that they've made. I just I could see the Titans being between 7 to 10 wins. That's kind of my range I have for them this year. I think they're definitely winning over 6.5, so I, I'm going to go with the over and show some optimism. See, I'm optimistic too, everybody. I'm going over, but with that being said, we are just getting started. Coming up, What's one thing that could derail the success that everyone thinks their team is going to have this season? It's the 2024 Locked On NFL Season Preview. 
of the AFC South. Passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. The 2024 Locked On NFL season previews continue. A reminder, you can get daily coverage of your favorite NFL team by subscribing to their Locked On podcast. We also have the NFL covered nationally with Locked On NFL, Locked On NFL Scouting, Peacock and Williamson, Locked On Fantasy Football, Locked On Dynasty Football, and you can get 24-7 coverage of the NFL with our brand new Locked On NFL stream free on YouTube and Amazon Fire TV. So we've talked about maybe our high-level thoughts on what these teams are going to do this year, who's going to win the division, over, under on the win totals. But let's kind of zoom in a little bit. What are your more general expectations for your team? And what's one thing that could derail those expectations? Obviously, Cody is our division winner. You'll lead us off. Man, my expectation for this team, look, I say it a lot on Locked On Texans. I mean, I won't be surprised if they are representing the AFC um, in New Orleans come February 2025. But my gen- my realistic expectation has to be conference championship. But the one thing that concerns me about this team is the lack of depth. Look, I understand that the Houston Texans have a lot of big names, but they are a little bit top heavy. And the one thing that I've learned watching them throughout training camp, watching them throughout preseason is if an injury take place, anywhere with this team excluding the D line it's going to cause some problems especially if those injuries come out on the offensive line because Nick Broker is not the answer if Joe Mixon isn't healthy they don't really have a running back that I'm 100% healthy I mean 100% positive and saying you know I trust them to go out there and fill that empty void so they are top heavy and I think they definitely need to do something to add depth around this team yeah, I think with a division this tight, again, the win win totals are so close from FanDuel right. there, whatever, like we're really, really, really tight division. All of us are terrified of injuries right now, especially when it comes to our quarterbacks and other things. And I've already mentioned it with my quarterback a couple of times here. So mm. if I'm going to be realistic on terms of what could really derail this team without injuries, it's the Colts secondary. Very, very young secondary. Jalen Jones, a former seventh round pick starting on one side. Juju Brents, who can't go a week without getting injured on the other side. And then you have Nick Cross, another young player starting there at safety. These are young players, unproven players. And while that could lead to some great things for the Colts, it could also lead to some scary things and, and some really you know low floors for the secondary. So that could derail the team. But ultimately, I expect this team to obviously win this division like I predicted at the top of the show. And I think they're a team that can push for you know a playoff win or two. I don't think they're quite there with what Cody's saying with the Texans being a Super Bowl representative. But I do think this can be a young team that can make some noise come playoff time. In terms of the Jaguars, the thing that could derail them is it, it, we all study football, the offensive line. Now, the offensive line can – you can have all the talent in the world, the offensive line, to make that whole team look bad because you can't convert on third down. You can't keep your defense off the field. The thing is, is that is the biggest problem in Jacksonville right now. Here's the other side of it. They only had their offensive line that is going to be the same offensive line intact for one game last year. So they're depending on health, health to be the reason why and strength and condition and all of that stuff off the field to be the reason why those guys can perform together on the field. Now, through the preseason, guess what? They ain't been together. I don't know how you can go into the season doing something you ain't done in the offseason yet and that you didn't do last year. So that is the biggest issue. But even with that concern, they still won nine games. And the offensive line has been my major concern for two years. If they can be even close to what that coaching staff thinks, 
that's why I think you got two more games in them, and, and 11 games, I believe, wins this division. Tony, do you think Jacksonville could win a Super Bowl this year? Do you think the team's good enough for that? Um, I didn't think the Eagles could win a Super Bowl with Nick Foles, so mm. sure, they can, <laughs> right? Okay. But everything right. has to happen. I think it decreases. I think that the fact that the offensive line is a big question, it decreases your chance to win because, remember, even in Philly with Nick Foles, they had what I believe – are three Hall of Fame offensive linemen, Jason right. Peters at left tackle, Jason Kelsey at center, and Lane Johnson at right tackle. That gets you through a whole bunch of problems that you don't see. And I don't yeah. think that a bad offensive line can get you out of problems that you do see the same way that those guys did for problems that you don't. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Speaking of offensive line issues, uh, Tennessee Titans, I mean, one of the worst in the NFL for a few years running now. Uh, I think the expectations for the Titans is just to get back to to winning football and hopefully exciting football. Um, the Titans have been on the downswing for the last two years. Things have been trending down. So I think the expectation is things start trending up again. I think the Titans can make the playoffs if things go well. Like I could see them making the playoffs, maybe winning one game if they get a good matchup. I don't think the Titans are going to be going to a conference championship or a Super Bowl or anything like that, even if things do go well. Now, I thought that as the Titans were 2-4 and four in 2019, and then they went on one of the craziest runs in team history. So you're right, Tony, anything's possible. But I think my realistic expectations for the Titans are, I, I really think they should win eight games at minimum. Seven could happen. Like I said, I think the range is seven to 10, but the Titans should be able with all the talent they've added to win eight, maybe nine games, even if they just miss out on the playoffs because the AFC is competitive with a nine win season. You just start to build. It feels like you're starting to build back in the right direction. Now, I could sit here, like I already mentioned, the offensive line and say if the O-line is still bad, J.C. Latham struggles as a rookie, which rookie offensive linemen struggle when they're thrown into the fire. That's just a reality. I mean, Zach, I'm going to talk about this in a second, but the Colts have some young players on the offensive line that maybe didn't look too great early on. And, you know, Will Fries and Bernard Raymond, who have turned out to be okay players. So, you know, young offensive linemen struggle in the NFL. And I could say the offensive line and that be fine. The right side's still bad. But let's just all be honest. What really could derail the Titans season is if Will Levis isn't good. That, that's the real answer. Whether Titans fans want to hear that or not, I know. But Will Levis has shown signs of great play. But they're signs of recklessness. Even in the preseason game, he's lowering his shoulder, getting smacked by linebackers. Like, he's been hurt a lot over the last few years, whether it be college or the NFL, foot injury, toe ankle like he's just a guy who takes a beating he was a former running back and linebacker so it makes sense he plays that way but the reality here is everything rests on whether Will Levis is good or not whether it's a good season or a bad season is whether or not Will Levis is good or bad that's where the Titans are at right now do you have the guy or not that's all that matters so for me it's pretty clear the expectations are just getting a positive direction but Will Levis is going to be the guy who can take him there or derail that possibility as well. Real quick, we'll go through, because I would imagine it's just going to be a quarterback love fest at this point. Is there an MVP candidate on your team? And if you don't think that there's a guy on your team that can win NFL MVP, who do you think could be the MVP of your team? So, Cody, obviously, we start with you. It's a easy answer, C.J. Stroud. But outside of like C.J., it. the one guy that I look at that could probably be MVP of this division is actually Tank Dell. And I call Tank Dell the most dangerous X factor um, in the league because, of course, the opponents, when you take a look at how you're going to slow down this wide receiving core, Nico Collins, 1,300 yards last year. Stephon Diggs, don't know about you guys. I've always considered him top 10 at that position for about a decade now. But when you throw in Tank Dell, a guy who has shown – how explosive he was prior to the injuries and, you know, the little off field issue that he got himself into, you know, a lot of people still don't know what to expect, but I'm telling you watching him doing OTAs, mandatory camp, training camp and in preseason tank Dell is ready to play. And I think he is going to be the one that's going to make this offense possibly, if not the best offense in the league, no lower than second best. You know, I had Tank Dell in fantasy football last year, so I completely agree. Fantastic <laughs> player. Fantastic player. Until the injury happened, fantastic player. And I'm going to take a take a note from Cody's book here, and I'm going to go away from quarterback, too, because I think it's just more entertaining to not talk about the quarterback for this. Right, exactly. Um, 
I think the air around Jonathan Taylor and in Indy this year is similar mm-hmm. to what it was when he had that dominant season a couple years ago. I know he's had two horrible seasons in terms of health the last two years, but the way that he finished last year, it looked like Jonathan Taylor again. I mean, Cody, you were there. You saw oh, it, man. Oh, my goodness. You, you saw it. It that was, was nasty. Prime Jonathan Taylor, and that was with Gardner Minshew not being able to throw the football in that game whatsoever. You knew the mm-hmm. run was coming. But it was Jonathan Taylor back with Carson Wentz again where it didn't matter if you knew it was coming because Jonathan Taylor was that dominant in that game. And I right. think the vibe around it is, look, this guy's under contract. He's healthy. He's getting a quarterback who's going to take some of the pressure off of him in terms of his own running ability. And Jonathan Taylor's going to have lighter boxes for the first time in years. So I think Jonathan Taylor is poised to have a massive season, maybe not as massive as a couple of years ago, but – it's going to be something crazy. I think as long as he stays healthy, I think Jonathan Taylor is going to be fantastic this year for the Colts. I, so y'all went away from quarterbacks. I will do none of that nonsense. (laughs) I'm going to tell you right now, if the Jaguars win, everybody's going to put the Prince that was promised or whatever they call him on national TV, Trevor Lawrence. However, I will tell you this. I personally believe that the defense will be the thing that catapults the Jaguars to a the other level and that means defensive coordinator ryan nielsen who if he does what i think he's gonna do is gonna be here for one year but that's fine um and he has had success with power pass rushers uh in in down in uh new orleans whether it be trey hendrickson before he went to cincinnati and of course cam jordan i think the biggest impact he's gonna have is gonna be on trayvon walker and the reason why i say that is because mike tomlin raved about him before their game last year See, this is the difference between coaches and fans. Coaches, Mike Tomlin called him a game wrecker. That happens to be the same thing that two SEC defensive coordinators <laughs> told my friend Danny Thompson about Trayvon Walker when everybody wanted to talk about Jordan Davis and all the rest of these dudes at Georgia when they were there. If this team wins and Trayvon gets 12 sacks and seven tackles for loss and he is just this disruptive person, if the defense gets more credit than the offense, then I think they'll go to the best defensive player on that defense. And that means I think Trayvon Walker has a chance to be the MVP. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. I'll keep it short. Uh, Titans don't really have an MVP candidate, in my opinion. Jeffrey Simmons deserves some love. I think Simmons with Tavondre Sweat next to him, taking up double blockers. I think Jeffrey Simmons is is poor. They shut Simmons down last year. Yeah, I know. I know. Listen, I told everybody, I told everybody that it was going to rain. And guess what? It is sunny outside. And Tavondre Sweat, Sweat you like Sweat has now? been fantastic. Tavondre yeah, no, Sweat, the guy. No doubt. Uh, yep. Got to give him the credit, man. He's looked, he's looked fantastic. But I think that helps Jeffrey Simmons. And Simmons has, I think the top interior defensive lineman in the NFL is kind of open. Chris Jones is the favorite with Aaron Donald going. I think Jeffrey Simmons can take that role and be looked at as the best interior defensive lineman in the league if he gets a double-digit sack season with a little more help. But with that being said, that's our expectations, what could derail teams, our MVPs, X-factors from our teams. Now, we're going to give each other some flowers. All right? We're about to enter a grueling 18-week season where we all want the team that we cover to come out on top. Before that battle begins, again, let's give each other some flowers here. It's the 2024 Locked On NFL season preview of the AFC South. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. And then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. And talking about betting $5, you look at some of the odds to win the AFC South. Houston Texans plus 105, Jaguars plus 270, Colts plus 310, the Titans plus 950, A lot of good odds you could take advantage of. Make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. Season previews continue. A reminder, you can get daily coverage of your favorite NFL team by subscribing to their Locked On podcast. We also have the NFL covered nationally with Locked On NFL, Locked On NFL Scouting, Peacock and Williamson, Locked On Fantasy Football, Locked On Dynasty Football, 
and you can get 24-7 coverage of the NFL with our brand new Locked On NFL stream. It's free on YouTube and Amazon Fire TV. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to be nice to each other. We're not going to argue over who te- whose team is better, whose quarterback is better. We're going to be friendly here and give some flowers to our division rivals and what we like from their team. So, Cody, I'll let you go first here. What is something about another AFC South team that you like, you admire, you want to give some flowers to? I hate that I'm doing this knowing that me and him have had a rival over the last four or five years, but it's the Jacksonville Jaguars, man. And, and we, you know, I've told you this before, like I've always been a fan of Trevor Lawrence. I'm still a fan of Trevor Lawrence. And I just don't understand why so many people was um, – you know, making fun of his contract extension. I was like, he deserves the contract extension. And I can't not name 10, 11, 12 quarterbacks that's better than Trevor Lawrence. And not only that, I've said this, look, I know we are sitting here raving AFC South divisional round and all this other stuff. But I said this, if the Jacksonville Jaguars stay healthy, especially Trevor Lawrence, and they don't go, what was it like one in five, one in six, those last couple of games, this whole entire conversation we just had will be completely different. So shout out to the Jags, man. I have them as a dark horse to really make some noise this year. I just want to say, Cody, I do not think that Trevor Lawrence is a top 10 or 11 quarter. I think I can name 10 or 11. I tried. I can't do this here. I tried. I tried. I can't do it. I'm sorry. i sorry, guys. I couldn't hold myself too long. <laughs> I, I thrive off negativity, okay? I thrive. So, anyway. You All right, sorry, set the Zach. standard for this I know, segment here. I know. I'll be nice to Definitely. everyone now. Tyler, I love what the Titans are doing with revamping that entire roster. That needed a massive Ooh. revamp. They brought in a lot of players. Now, I don't know if it's going to work out, but you know what? I, I appreciate a team actually trying to revamp an entire roster. Cody, CJ Stroud, oh my gosh, he is so good. Mm. So good. like I was I was losing faith in pocket passers and then I saw CJ Stroud doing what he's doing. And then Tony, this is the one I really wanted to get to. I'm so jealous of Ryan Nielsen. I'm so jealous that you guys got him as DC. I am terrified of him more than any other coach in this division that's not on the Colts because I saw what he did to the Colts last year with the Falcons. And it was the most brutal beat down the Colts had in terms of a defense just taking away. Now they didn't have Michael Pittman Jr. in that game, but still it was just suffocating type of team there and Ryan Ryan Nielsen's been great for years so I think there's great things about all of you I don't feast on negativity I love all of you guys the same you're like my children now Tony you're not like my child but everyone else here is like my my child here I love all of you guys so you're telling I'm too old to be your baby no I mean mean, I can be a baby now don't worry I can turn into a kid real quick but no let me go and order the the people see Tyler let me tell you something y'all needed to change the direction even though I'm a huge Mike Vrabel fan as you know and the reason I'm that way I'm going to tell you this real quick is because this whole new way of Shanahan winning and all of that stuff the only one that's done it is the coach in LA Mm. the other times all the old old school coaches keep winning and Every time I turn around in college football, it's Kirby and it's Nick. It's the old school way. It's not the coach at USC. So I'm still saying we need to start adapting to stuff when it finally wins something as opposed to trying to get ahead of the curve. But I still think your coach has done a really good job of coming in and changing things. Cody, y'all done a lot of things right. Daniel Hunter, all of that stuff. I still say it's going to be different when the rabbit got the gun. But I do think Houston has been very, very intentional with who they get how they get them, and I think they know who they are. They have a self-identifier, real. They have that down pack. Zach, y'all have been steady Eddie. I mean, the team that everybody keeps writing off, they keep being right in the thick of things at the end of the season. So that means they're doing something right, and you should know about hanging around because Tony Dungy did that for years until he got a championship. I, As far as the Jaguars are concerned, look, Y'all can hate all you want to, man, but the real deal is the real deal. Trevor Lawrence is the top 10 quarterback because you can't (laughs) play behind that offensive line that everyone knows has been trash and still win nine games. If they get him the protection, and I don't know if they have it yet, but if they get him the protection, he can be really, really good. Well, I'll rock quickly because this being nice stuff just maybe isn't for me. Uh, (laughs) I will say – the, no, the it's edge. not. I know it's no, not. Right. Trust me. It's not. Right, Talk about right. Devondre Sweat for hey, us real quick, Tyler. I, I know who I am. All right. I know who I am and I know who I'm not. All right. But anyways, the edge rushers for both Houston and Jacksonville, uh, I think the Titans are really missing a high-level edge. Harold Landry is a good, very good edge rusher. 
but I think you need like an elite edge rusher, and then the Titans would have a nasty front, but they're missing that. Arden Key is not that. Like, I just wish the Titans had one other starting level edge rusher, and Houston has like three, Jacksonville has two. Like, I'm just jealous of that. And then obviously the Colts' offensive line, like I mentioned earlier in the show, you know, even the guys who look like they're not going to pan out, you lift your head up two years later and they're quality starters. Like maybe mm. Fries or and maybe Bernard Raymond isn't, you know, all pros, but I mean, like they're, they're good. very good starters in good, the NFL yeah. now. Not weaknesses. So, at, not weaknesses. Right, right. Right. They're not weaknesses. And as a guy who's been watching Dennis Daly and Andre Dillard play offensive tackle for the last few years, it, it just makes me jealous. But real quick, we'll go through this. How do you think the teams finish in the division one to four? Cody, you lead us off. I got the Texans followed closely by Jacksonville. Oh, okay. And for number three, I'm gonna go on the limb and say Tennessee. And I got the Colts finishing last. I think Ooh. I think think Anthony Richardson is gonna, gonna struggle this year. Not only is he gonna try to get himself back to game speed with his health and stuff, but I think just losing his his first basically his entire rookie season is gonna hurt him in the long run. We'll see. We'll see. Richardson in games that him and Stroud have started against each other. Richardson's one to know. So I mean, we're we're, do, we're already doing great, right? <laughs> I, got, I got Indy one, Jacksonville two, Houston three, Tennessee four. Let's go, Tony. Back me up here, right? Come on, come on. We got this. You know you're my boy, but I gotta tell you the truth. I'm, I'm a tough love. See, y'all call me old. You said I couldn't be your baby, so now I gotta okay, be your okay. uncle. You can be my so, child. It's fine. So right. So here's the thing: Jacksonville one, Houston two, and then I believe it's Tennessee oh. and Indy. Okay. I don't think they're 500. I think they're below 500. I think everybody thinks this is the old NFC, uh, AFC North. I don't think it's quite that. But I do believe that both of those teams could beat anybody on any given day. But I just think there's going to be a lot of stuff working against them. So it's Houston and Jacksonville's division to win. Jacksonville's obviously going to win it because I don't really like Cody very much. And so <laughs> I'm just going to say that those other two teams will be seven, eight win teams. All right, I'm going to back you up, Zach. I feel like we're like polar. You're like very nice, and I'm like very harsh. You know what I mean? So we're a good balance here. So I'm going to back you up as kind of my partner in that tandem. I'm going to go Houston number one. I'm going to go Indy number two. I'm going to go Tennessee number three. And I'm going to go Jacksonville number four. I don't believe in the Jags O-line. I don't like uh, Gabe Davis, the signing. There are a couple things I like, which, Tony, we'll get into our crossovers. I know that we'll get into it. But, yeah, I'll put Jacksonville last in the division <laughs> and uh, let Zach have, have his moment at number two. But so, this so sounds y'all, like a So if y'all going to wonder if I'm going to say it, because I always say it, do I think Tyler's a hater? you damn right I think he's he a hater. There you go right there. Right. That's, that's my thing that I always say. you damn right he's hating. <laughs> Every year, man. Every year. I was wondering no when it was coming world. this year. <laughs> you got me. You got me. Anyways, with that being said, of course, we have Cody Davis from Locked On Texans. We have Zach Hicks from Locked On Colts. Tony Wiggins from Locked On Jaguars. I am Tyler Rowland from Locked On Titans. Thank you for listening to the 2024 Locked On NFL season preview with the AFC South. If you want to hear how the other divisions will play out this year, subscribe to Locked On NFL wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team. Every day.